digital marketing by storm over the last decade. My name is Parker DeCover, owner of Prime Edge Media, a full service video marketing company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. And since 2020, it's been my mission to help business owners across the nation harness the sheer power of video marketing. And the Camera Roll Chronicles is my attempt to supplement that with the industry's latest trends, as well as stories and lessons that we've learned from client projects and even special guests from adjacent industries. So without further ado, quiet on set please, and action. Guys, what's going on? Isn't that cool as fuck, by the way? <laughs> I freaking love that intro so much. Um, so what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Camera Roll Chronicles. It feels so freaking good to be doing another live again. Um, we haven't done one of these in a very long time, but um, I am going to try and get some more of these out here. Um, so... Today, I want to talk about a huge shift that we've seen in, um, well, we started seeing this in the first quarter, but we didn't really want to talk about it just yet because we weren't too sure like what was actually going to come of it. We didn't know if it was a trend thing. Um, so we've kind of realized that it's not, and I've even seen this in my own content recently. So I want to talk about it. Um, now, if you guys have been following me for a hot minute, you know that a lot of my older content was a lot faster. It's a lot more, um, I guess, just a lot more edited. You know, there's a lot more going on all the time. There's a lot more effects. There's a lot more visuals. Um, there's like just the pacing is way faster than my content is now. And if you follow any of our clients, you've probably also seen that with our client stuff too. Reason being is because what we found is people are becoming banner blind to over edited, like over stimulating content. And to really show you how true this really is, I just, I want to show you guys this tweet. So this tweet is from Mr. Beast, who is, by the way, the most successful YouTuber on the planet right now. Um, just on his main channel alone, he has 255 million subscribers. So um, he says, this past year, I've slowed down our videos, focused on storytelling, let scenes breathe, yelled less, more personality, longer videos, etc." And our views have skyrocketed. My fellow YouTubers, let's get rid of this ultra fast paced, overstimulating era of content. It doesn't even work. Now, if that doesn't tell you what you need to know right there, I don't know what will. Um, it's it's insane to me the the just how quickly this shifted. Because like I I had kind of a feeling about this like six months ago when I started seeing all that shit going on on TikTok. But I wanna I wanna kind of explain where I think this comes from and why the shift is being made. So what I noticed was through 2020, like the latter half of 2020 where everyone was just on the couch doing nothing, endlessly scrolling through videos. What we found is at that time, because that's all people were doing at that point, that it took a hell of a lot more to get their attention, you know, because everyone was just watching content all day. Like no one was working, no one was really doing anything with their lives, no one was going outside and shit. Like they were all just sitting inside on their phone, scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. So one thing we have to think about here is, you know, I if you're a like serial entrepreneur, hyper productivity person, kind of like I am, you probably are pretty familiar with the concept of a dopamine detox. And what a dopamine detox is, for those of us who don't know, is essentially when you start feeling super sluggish, and just like nothing like is super exciting anymore. 
And, um, you know, you're just kind of like, like it's that feeling that you get after you eat like a bunch of really good food and you go home and you're just like binging TikTok over and over and over. And, you know, like after, after a certain amount of time, you just are like, Ugh. like, I just like, you know, you're just overstimulated, you know, and it's, it's a pretty like uncomfortable feeling. And it leads to a lot of like people getting demotivated and not wanting to work and stuff like that. And that's why it's a big thing in the entrepreneur space. But what we noticed is the same thing applies to content. So what people are prescribing is doing a dopamine detox where, you know, you, uh, you put your phone on grayscale. So your, uh, your screen is black and white. So you don't get all the crazy colors and shit, um, going on and like overstimulating you. You also get a, um, or you also have to like ditch all like good tasting food and like it has to be super bland um no drugs or alcohol like you have to uh like no social media at all if you want to like go on social media or be entertained or whatever like read a book you know it's it's purposely making yourself bored out of your mind so that your mind can kind of come down from that super overstimulated dopamine high that we're all chasing 24 hours a day. Um, but anyway, so what we had noticed was seeing, so taking a look at reels and stuff, what we had seen I, up until about a year ago or so, we were seeing these hooks that were like, you know, a giant rock falling into water and and then it like cuts to something completely different. Or uh, a lot of us have probably seen the uh, the clip of the like person falling off the um, the what is it called? The like gurney of an ambulance and like rolling over and then it cuts to someone rolling into frame and going into what they're going to talk about. I think those are fucking genius, by the way. Um, but what we're noticing is that people really aren't looking at those anymore because they've gotten banner blind to it. So anytime you see something that's essentially looks too good to be true, you just kind of assume that it is and you scroll past because it's so fucking easy for you to just swipe and swipe and swipe. And that's why we talk about how important it is to grab your viewers by the throat and pull them into your content in the first three seconds. Because if you don't do that, they're gone and you're never going to get them back. And then the other, you know, 87 seconds of that video that you just, you know, spent, you know, a day making or more is wasted all because you didn't know how to capture their attention properly. So I want to show you guys another example. So this Reddit post um, comes from a while back. And let me see if I can cut down my... There we go. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm not going to read this entire thing. But the the title basically gives you the solid gist, which is, you know, the, the way that modern YouTubers edit their videos makes me want to bash my head in. And... <laughs> and they literally just go into it with, you all know what I'm talking about. So, you know, you know what I'm talking about, the excessive and over editing of videos by larger content creators. It completely ruins my enjoyment of these YouTubers. And I feel like I'm the only one of, uh, who has a problem with it. Most of the time, YouTubers will cut to themselves after finishing a, a short series of words. I understand not wanting the viewer to hear your breaths in between sentences but if that happens every three seconds, it's just annoying. What they're getting at here is the um, the concept of jump cuts. So every little breath in between, it it used to be that you had to cut that out and it just had to go like cut, 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 cut. And that is not the case anymore. Uh, moving on. But that isn't one of the really bad ones. Most of the time when something is quote unquote funny... Uh, the YouTuber will have a camera zoom in on their face. It's fine if you do it once or twice, but so many YouTubers have done it literally every time they say something that's supposed to make you laugh. And it sucks because it's like the video is telling you, 
quote, laugh now. I'm less likely to laugh if you do the same gag over and over again. Um, now, the bottom half of that goes into like gaming videos and stuff, um, which we won't get into. But that Reddit post was definitely ahead of its time. Um, I am now seeing way more of those posts. And I'm even seeing in my own like favorite uh, business influencers on social media, I'm seeing in their comment sections, people are saying like, hey, stop posting like this over edited shit. Like I can't, I can't focus on what it is that you're even trying to show me because all these effects are just taking my attention. It's confusing. It's distracting. And it's just not something that I want to watch. In fact, there was this video that we showed off at um, at our workshop that we did in, I think it was December or January or something. And like a surprising amount of people watched that video and were like, no, I thought it moved too fast. Like I, I couldn't even keep up with what it was saying. In fact, I'm gonna show you guys that video. Just so we can get a feel for what it is that I'm trying to show you. And this, so this business influencer is notorious for creating content like this. Um, he's also great at he's generated like billions of dollars for, um, for his clients. So not here to talk shit or make fun. Uh, but I am here to show you what I'm talking about. Let's see here. So it's funny that this video talks about focus. Um, all right. There we go. All right. Where did my tab go? There we go. Focus is the number one superpower in life. It is the currency that the modern world is built on. And nothing will impact how successful you are more so than your ability to focus. Because it doesn't matter how skilled you are if you can't apply those skills by focusing. And just like any other skill, you can get better at it. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my eight step process for unlocking unwavering hyperfocus. This is the exact eight step system that took me from an ADD ridden entrepreneur with an extreme and chronic case of shiny objects syndrome to running a hundred person company with multiple offices, thousands of clients, having a family, having a life, traveling to 15 plus countries per year and almost selling 1 million books. This is what has worked for me and I hope at least some of it will work for you. When I first... Okay, so it's pretty obvious, right, that most of us couldn't tell what was going on after like the intro. I heard him talk about focus for a minute and then I couldn't focus because I just kept trying to catch up with all of the one word subtitles that were going on on the screen. By the way, stop using one word subtitles. It's not like it doesn't make for a better you, uh, viewing experience. I promise. It just gets confusing. And there was this theory for a while that like the more stuff that you have going on on the screen, the more attention that you will get from these people. And that is true, but only up to a certain point. So to sort of bring this home here, um, I, so I want to show you an example with my content. Then I'm going to show you an example with another, uh, one of my favorite influencers in business space, um, who has, I think he's gained like 8 million or so uh, subscribers over the last like two years, which is freaking insane. Um, and the way that they did that was through just creating content over and over and over and over and over. And, um, and, and I think they did like a hundred and 
70, 80 ish, um, like posts every single week to get this data. So you guys are going to want to stick around for that. Uh, cause even I haven't come close to that. Uh, okay. So I'm going to quick show you guys my reels. And this is what kind of, this is what kind of made me a little curious about this, uh, this whole thing. So if we go back and we take a look at some of my most like over edited content, I would say my most over, hmm. Yeah, like definitely one of these. So you guys see how these are all getting, you know, like 160 views, 140 views, 130 views. And then we look at some of the new stuff that's a lot more authentic and a lot less fast paced and crazy and in your face. And we're seeing... 1.4 thousand, 1.2 thousand, 1 1.1 thousand, 800, 820, um, yeah, five, three, 1.5 K, eight. Yeah, guys, all of these are very, very, very simple. So let's take a look at one of the old ones versus one of the new ones. In the next 60 seconds, you're going to learn exactly how I still managed to run a 15-man video marketing agency handling dozens of retainer clients with hundreds of videos in their content plans and still managed to come out with 30 plus pieces of content every month for our business. And today I'm going to show you how I plan everything out in an hour. The first biggest thing we do is look at what issues are coming up in our sales conversation. So when we're in the middle of a discovery call, we write down the questions that our prospects keep asking. And so that's not even one of the worst um, because that that like that was moving pretty fast, but it still wasn't super over edited. Let's see. Um, but now let's take a look at one of the more authentic and valuable ones. So let's do one of the one. So, oh, and here's another like huge prime example. So the, the TikTok one, I'll show that one. And then I'll show the, uh, the one that got 1.5. The social media giant under attack. Time may be running out. Wow. It's so over edited. It's not even showing it to me. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> there we go out for TikTok. It moves so fast that I can't even get it to play. Under attack time may be running out for TikTok. Congress is set to vote this week on a bill. Yeah, I I can't can't barely even get it to play. Um, well, I'll just fill in the blanks for you. Um, it was super, super quick. Um, like obnoxiously quick. And the reason that we did that was because I wanted to test that theory. Um, now let me pull my reels back up. All right, so now if we go from that and we take a look at this one.
just looking to build no like and trust factor with their community online and are looking for the best way to do that. My bad. You guys couldn't even see what the hell I was showing you. That that's where we come in. If you're looking for just a refresh that. My bad. Instead of someone else. No, oh, don't. Um no. <laughs> I mean it it all depends on what you're looking for. I mean, obviously, you know, if you're if you're a small business. Oh, come on. Now, of course, it doesn't want to play. Now that that isn't actually... making six figures a year. Our stuff isn't going to make. OK, that's really fucking annoying. Uh, I apologize. So um, I guess I will just talk you through this because um, it doesn't seem like it wants to uh, just show my example here. But that video was just a little um, day in the life type interview that we did. There was no background music. There was no sound effects, no nothing. It was very simple B-roll and captions. That's it. And that post got six times the amount of views and engagement that uh, than that other reel that I had just shown you or, well, tried to show you. It had a hell of a lot more effects and crazy shit going on. So I want to bring this home by um, just kind of, because I was going to show you guys that, but I don't think it's going to do it. So I guess I'll just explain it to you. Um, so Alex and Layla Hormozy are two of the biggest business influencers on social media these days, and they are pretty much running their entire firm off of just social media. Um, obviously, like they have a team and a back end and all that stuff, but the only way that they're getting leads is through social media content and educating people. What they noticed after gaining, you know, 7.8 million fucking people in, I think it was like two or three years, what they realized was people don't want to see the over edited content. Instead, they wanted to see more of the day in the life, more like reality TV style content that showed off like just their day to day and who they were authentically and who they were, you know, in real life. And the reason that that shit works so well is because nobody trusts anyone anymore and rightfully fucking so like there's no reason to trust anyone on the internet anymore these days. Like there's so many fucking scams out there right now that most people like, even if, you know, like me or my virtual assistant are reaching out in the DMS to some people who have just joined the group just to say, Hey, listen, we have this free thing for you. And I want to make sure that you get that people are still telling us to fuck off because they don't know who we are and they don't trust us. And again, rightfully so they've only been in the ecosystem for, a, you know, a day or less. Um, so we have to consider where these people are at when they're first coming across you and your business, you know, what is it that they want to see? And I think that so many people are so terrified of polarizing themselves against other demographics that they don't really want to do business with anyway, that aren't their ideal customers. And they're saying like, oh, well, I just don't want to like alienate myself. And I just don't want to, you know, offend these people and whatever, but then you do that by watering down your content, making it bland as fuck. Then, then, you know, it leads to you making the, you know, read the caption posts and shit like that, where there's no sustenance to it. And you look like everyone else who's making AI fueled content that doesn't do it right. You know, obviously there is a way to do AI content correctly. Um, and if you guys want to know how to do that, Follow uh, Jonathan Mast and his group, um, AI Growth for Entrepreneurs. I think that's what it's called. Um, we've done a couple podcasts in here um, with him on all of that. So if you guys want that link, let me know. Um, but anyway, like point being is you need to be real with people if you want them to trust you. And you have to look trustworthy. So even if you are making, you know, super engaging and authentic content that screams you and it's too fast and too jarring and just like 
there's too much going on, people still aren't going to get the message that you're trying to portray. It's just not going to happen. So you have to find that balance. And if you want to know what type of content that your audience wants to see, because obviously different demographics resonate with different types of content. The younger they are, the typically the more they resonate with the fast moving stuff and the shorter stuff. And um, the typically the older they are, the more they resonate with the more long form, slow moving, you know, methodical type of videos. Um, and honestly, the reason for that is because of how we both grew up. So it's just kind of ingrained in us. Um, but if your demographic is, you know, middle-aged or so, then you need to be right in the middle of that and just be making content that is authentic to you and that you could only make, you know, talk about things that you have only done, answer questions that only you could answer, you know, and really just be fucking real and have the objective of building trust with your content and showing people why it is they should work with you, not trying to just like get their fucking wallet from them. And like, you know, hi, here's a video. It, here's like 30 seconds about me. Give me your credit card. Like that type of content does not do well. Um, and we are, we're seeing that more and more and more. So point being, be real with people. If you want to do real business, you need to be real and look like a real business because no one likes the crazy risk reversal offers anymore. You know, like you remember when people were making those offers back like two, three years ago, where it was like, yeah, I'll get you, you know, a bajillion dollars in three minutes, or I triple your money back and give you my firstborn child. Like, those don't work because they are too good to be true. They sound too good to be true, and they are. All you have to do is look at the fine print, and you'll realize how fucked up those offers are. What people want to see is authentic offers that just show, hey, listen, I can fix this fucking problem that you're having. Not, hey, I'm going to fix this problem, and by the way, I'm going to do it like tomorrow, and I'm going to set all these unrealistic expectations, and I'm going to make you super mad at me, but then I'm going to tell you that it's your fault because you didn't do that one thing that I told you to do, therefore making my entire argument crumble. We don't want that. Your audience doesn't want that. Nobody wants that. It's slimy. It's gross. Don't just stop doing it. So I think that's where I'm going to end this. Um, Cause I think my, my point has gotten across and I hope you guys understand what it is that you need to do now. Just document, document what you're doing. You know, be real at like approach the camera. Like you're trying to speak with a prospect who needs your help and you're just there to tell them about what you do and be real with them. I guarantee you it's going to do plenty better than what you're doing right now, especially if you're not doing anything. <laughs> so anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys got some value out of this. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns about any of what I just spoke about, please leave them in the comments and I will talk to you guys later. See you. Bye.